Hi there, my name is Pastor Renee McIntyre from Trumpet of Truth Christian Ministries, and I have some prophetic insight for you tonight. You know, a few nights ago, I had a dream. In this dream, there was a female preacher, and this woman is also a prophet, and she was preparing herself for a sexual encounter with a female prostitute. Now, this preacher slash prophet's friends were the ones that were readying this prostitute for this encounter. And they were pressuring the preacher and saying things like, isn't she beautiful? Don't worry about it. Nobody's ever going to find out. This is going to be amazing. Look at how beautiful she is. You know, really, really pressuring her. And the female preacher was saying to herself, you know, I probably shouldn't do this. This is not right. The prostitute probably has a lot of diseases that I very well may catch myself. Um, but I really want this baby. And I knew in the dream that this encounter was more than likely going to happen. Now I woke up and I started saying to the Lord, what on earth was that? I knew that I knew that that dream was from the Lord. As I began to inquire and press in through prayer, I, he began to tell me that I am calling forth for a purification of both the pulpit and the prophetic, because a lot of Prophets and a lot of pulpit preachers have been prostituting their platform. They've been mixing the profane things of this world with the sacred things of God. And he is calling for a cleansing right now. You know, I believe that Canada needs to make room for the prophetic voice. I myself am a pulpit minister and I'm prophetic. And I truly believe in the prophetic ministry. And I believe that God wants Canada to embrace it. I believe that he is ready to raise it up. But he's also calling right now for purification because he is wanting a clarion sound from both the pulpit and from the prophets. The Lord took me to Ezekiel 22. Uh, it's uh, concerning the sins of Israel's leaders. And I'm going to read to you from verse 26 and 28. It says, they make no distinction between what is holy and what is not, and they do not teach my people the difference between what is ceremonially clean and unclean. Now, I want you to, I want you to um, re remember that in this dream, there were two women. This was a homosexual encounter. You know, one of the trappings right now of the prophet, uh, sorry, of the pulpit minister is to allow people to believe that the profane things of secularism, such as homosexuality, is okay. You know, this, this, um, for some reason, this preacher thought that this homosexual encounter with this prostitute was going to be able to bring forth a child. It's, it just doesn't make any sense in the natural. That is not possible. Two women together cannot make a baby. But I do believe that right now, one of the largest temptations is to overlook the teaching of what is ceremonially clean and unclean in the kingdom of God because we fear the loss of reputation. We fear people being upset with us. And the Lord is saying, no, we have got to cleanse the message. We've got to be very clear about what is clean and what is unclean so that we are not leading people astray. Listen to what verse 28 says. Actually, I'm going to start at verse 27, part B. It says they actually destroy people's lives for money. And then it says, and your prophets cover up for them by announcing false visions and making lying predictions. They say, my message is from the sovereign Lord when the Lord hasn't spoken a single word to them. The Lord is calling for a cleansing. I'm going to probably say it several times throughout this video, but he is. He's calling for a cleansing right now of both the pulpit and of the prophetic voice. You know, a lot of prophets, uh, one of the temptations of the prophetic voice of the prophets is to soften and tweak what the Lord is saying so that people don't get upset, so that it is what we would call palatable. But the Lord has not asked us to soften what it is that he is saying so that people don't get mad at us. He's not called us to be popular. 
He's called us to be pure. He's called us to have a very clear sound. And sometimes what the Lord wants to speak is, is a rebuke. You know, I don't know how you soften a rebuke so that it is still received as a rebuke. And I just really believe that the temptation to prostitute our pulpits and prostitute the prophetic is very real right now in this season. I believe that the that there are a lot of prophets, a lot of prophetic voices, and a lot of pulpit ministers that are and are going to be lured by the seduction of prostitution, lured by the seduction of worldliness to gain fame, to gain popularity, to gain large ministries. And I just really want to warn you not to do it. Don't do it. We need pulpit ministers that are filled with the fear of the Lord. And we need prophets and prophetic voices that are filled with the fear of the Lord. You know, the things, the, the, the things that the world has to offer us, like large ministries at the cost of the purity of the word of God, like fame and fortune, they're nothing compared to the glorious things that the Lord has for us. Even if we have to wait until all of eternity to be able to experience the fullness of it. I just really want to encourage everyone, don't fall for the temptation of, of the trappings that would, that would call you and beckon you to begin to mix the profane things with the sacred things of God. Our, our word has got to be clear. We've got to be leading people to the Lord, not to ourselves. See, that's the thing is the temptation really is to lead people to us because we need to be important because we need to be loved because we need to be validated. The only validation that we really need is from the Lord. Don't try to draw people to you, draw them to him. I don't think that that dream could be very much clearer. You know, the Lord may have put a dream on your heart, may have given you a vision for ministry, and maybe it is big, and maybe it's wonderful, but you need to do it in the timing of God. You know, a lot of this reminds me of Sarah and Abraham and Sarah bringing in Hagar and offering her up so that the promise of God could be made manifest. They were old. They were past child rearing. And she says here, let's get this done. Let's do this now. Let's do it fast. Here's Hagar. They birthed Ishmael. And that is the, that is a consequence of trying to get ahead of the Lord and manufacturing the promise by mixing the profane things with the things of God is you will produce an Ishmael. You won't produce the promise. There are great consequences that come from that. So I believe that in God's grace and his mercy, that he is warning us right now. And I think that it's a wonderful thing. So I think that all of us pulpit ministers and all of us prophetic voices need to humble ourselves right now, need to get before the threat, get on the threshing floor and let God deal with our hearts, our motives. And we have to say yes, count the cost and say yes, no matter what it costs us. We're not in this for the glory. We're in this that he be glorified. We have to be preparing people for what is coming next. We're only in the birthing pains of the end times. And the birthing pains are pretty serious. They're pretty painful. We are, our job is to prepare people for what is coming, that they would be able to be strong, that we would raise up remnant warriors that we would raise up people that will not bow. And if we want to raise people up that won't bow, we have to be people that won't bow. So I hope that you're actually encouraged and challenged by this word, both, both encouraged and challenged by this word. Because remember, it's God's goodness and grace and mercy that brings warning to all of us. And I think that if we would take the time to submit to the purification process and to submit ourselves to the word of God, then he won't have to, he won't have to force us into it. Right? All right. 
Well, God bless every single one of you. And I hope that you'll share this message with everybody. Have a great night. Till next time.